America's crime crisis proving once again that no place is safe from senseless violence and anyone can become a victim at any time. A father visiting his son at Marist College in upstate New York for a family weekend shot and killed by a stray bullet after a fight broke out between two homeless men inside the lobby. Both suspects arrested at the scene and, of course, both had lengthy rap sheets. And you would expect to see this in a comic book. A group of green goblins robbing commuters on the New York subway. And, of course, no arrests have been made. And even though 72% of Americans say crime is extremely or very important to them, squad member Cori Bush thinks the left's push to defund police has nothing to do with it. You're one of the few Democrats now who still says, let's defund the police. Are you worried at all that that could hurt some of your colleagues going into the midterm elections? See, the, the thing about defund the police is we have to tell the entire narrative. People here defund the police, but you know what they'll say? Say reallocate, say divest, say move. Uh, but it's still the same thing. We can't get caught up on the words. Mm, keep digging. Keep digging, Judge. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Good to see you. Thank so you. we always find these two words in every one of these stories, you know, already known. They oh the police look, we already know these people, we're aware of these people, and it happens again and again and again. Where is there any way this will ever end? Yes, it will end. In the 90s, we had this problem. Everybody got fed up. They passed laws that went too far to the right in some people's minds, and then we got back to the middle. The left decided to that they were going to change the law, that we had to have cashless bail, that there was this concept of social justice that no one can define, by the way. I still can't find a definition of social justice. But the issue is how many people have to suffer at the hands of the left and this so-called social justice? How many people have to die at the altar of cashless bail? Whether it's someone who's a father at a weekend, college weekend, with it visiting his son, or whether it's someone who's going at 5 a.m. to her job on the uh, subway, the train, uh, the plane, I should say, who gets kicked in the head repeatedly, or if it's a woman pushing a baby in a carriage who gets shot in the back of the head. How many of us have to suffer while the left continues to promote these kinds of nonsensical theories that have nothing to do with reality? You can rest assured that Cori Bush has $300,000, as I recall, uh, spent on her own protection. And yet for the rest of us, every time someone dies or every time someone is victimized, we all come out to the age old criminal perpetrator, whether he's a whether he's a criminal, whether he's mentally ill, whether he's a repeat offender. We know who they are. We just let them out among us and we do nothing about it. And that's the sad part of this whole thing. Until we win in November, change cashless bail, and deal with the mentally ill. Because these two guys are homeless, they're mentally ill, and they're violent. I don't care if they're mentally ill. Lock them up if they're violent. Mm -hmm. You know, Martha, this, this week alone, and it's only Tuesday. Wait, it's Wednesday. Is it Tuesday? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. We had this gang of green goblins uh, and, and, and harassing people in the subway. Then we had a crazed naked man in Union Square climbing all over people. It, it, we, are we officially in kind of like Batman territory where the, where, the, where the lawbreakers don't just break the law, but there's this colorful sheen of derangement. So now it's like everything is an oddity. Like they're in co they come in costume now. Yeah, I, I'm, you just made the analogy that yeah. has been in my head. Yeah. It's like that dark scene in the beginning of Batman where, the, yeah. where everything is lawless. Yeah. It is Gotham gone awry. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and what I love is that you talk about the fact that they always say this, they were known to them, right? right. I love this executive, uh, the county executive, who said it was an isolated incident. <laughs> an isolated incident. With the I, I was at Parents Weekend at my son's college this weekend, right? I went downstairs to the lobby. It was crowded. We got coffee. The last thing that was on my mind was what somebody might be shooting people in mm -hmm. the lobby. This guy's in a courtyard Marriott with all the other parents. Paul Kutz is his name. This is his wife. He has three children. One of them is a student at Marist. The other two graduated from Marist. This is a human being who is no longer on this earth because of these two individuals who had modified the Glock gun that they had. Two dozen shots got fired off in that lobby. This is insane. This, this has to stop. You can't go to Parents Weekend and get shot and killed in the lobby of the Courtyard Marriott and have executives who are involved with law enforcement say, 
This was, it was isolated. That's supposed to make you feel better? Mm -mm. It is insane. And what about 61-year-old Allison Russo, whose funeral was today? Oh. Uh, this woman, you know, you could just tell when you look at her face on the cover of the New York Post, she's a good woman who cares about law enforcement. She's working hard. Stabbed to death. OK, and you mentioned some of the other things and you mentioned these green goblins. I mean, this this is out out of control. There's not enough front page, you know, front space on the front cover of The New York Post to do correct homage to all of these yeah. individuals. We need this needs to stop. It's, it, it, it's crazy. It's it's overwhelming now. It's you can't keep you can't keep track. And then meanwhile, Jesse, 72 percent says crime's an important issue, which raises the question, how effing stupid is the remaining 28 <laughs> percent? Like who are, are they must. You know what? That 28 percent must be the criminals yeah. taking the poll. <laughs> right. Or they live out in the middle of nowhere. Yes. You talk about isolated incidents, Martha. That reminds me of the lone wolves. Remember how many lone wolves we had during Obama? So many, it became a real problem. I think crime is top of mind mm -hmm. on the American people, as KJP would say. When you go out and you look at a website, I went up and did research on an upstate website, the entire page is full of crime. You turn on the local news at 6 o'clock. It's crime, it's weather, it's sports, it's crime, it's weather, it's sports. You go talk to guys at a bar, guys like to talk about threats and property. They're talking about crime. Women protect their children. When they're out with other moms, they're talking about crime. Now, the reason the Democrats don't want to touch it is because if they acknowledge there's a problem, they have to acknowledge their role in it. And they have to put forth a solution, a solution that they're not willing to offer. Because if you're a normal Democrat in a city where the crime is happening and you say we got to get tough on crime, we got to fund the police, you're going to get primaried by a squad. Now, the squad is poisoned because they've come in with these left wing ideologies and some of it's socialism and white supremacy. And that gets traction. But that's all theoretical. Their public safety policies are dangerous and they're literally killing people. So the Democrats have to be strong. And now they say you have to, to weed out these MAGA extremists from the Republican Party. The Democrats have to purge the squad extremists from the Democratic Party, because they are literally getting people killed. Now, these, the Green Bandit Gang, mm -hmm. that's what happens when you want to get famous. That's what happens when you know there's not going to be consequences. You get a buddy to film it, you put a costume on, and you do it for clout. You do it to go viral, you do it for clicks. That's how easy it is now. It's a game. Violence is a game now. But they kicked and punched two 19-year-olds. Yeah. You know, they, they were, this was a brutal attack. This isn't funny. Um, th these people were kicking and punching two 19-year-olds on the subway. I mean, it, it's yeah. so screwed up, you don't even know where you live anymore. Also, get to the gym. <laughs> so, I, I you didn't think the Green Bandit gang was in shape? No, I didn't. I didn't. I think they could do better. Harold, okay. <laughs> I, I, when we talk about crime, we're always in this kind of like area where we never can really punch through. How do we not make this a left versus right thing anymore? Is that impossible? Is it always now just going to be a political battle? Or is there a way that where people like you and people like all of us can meet together? Or is that just never going to happen? It has to. Yeah. Um, first of all, all the stories that have been raised, our hearts go out to and our condolences go out to. Uh, prima, you, you never wanted that story. You never thought you'd be visiting your kids at school and that would happen. I think when, when you think about serious people dealing with serious issues, some people can be serious, but their ideas are simply not serious. Cori Bush is, I don't know her. Mm -hmm. I assume because she's an elected member of Congress, she's serious, but she is completely and stunningly unserious when it comes to talking about, comes to talking about crime. Just like I think some in Congress who are on the fringe of the Republican Party are unserious when they talk about not funding Ukraine and their fight against Russia. Two, this is not a red or blue problem we have. This is a national problem we have. In eight of the states, Judge, uh, where the highest crime rates are, they're all led by Republican governors. But they don't run Governor, the city's I, no, police let me, let me just, departments. Can, I just love to finish my point. I know there have been four already points here. But they, they could come out, much like this governor's race in New York between Ms., Mrs. Hochul and Mr. Zeldin, there's an argument being made that Ms. Hochul is not doing her part to fight crime. In every state, if you're telling me the governors of Mississippi, Louisiana, Kentucky, and South Carolina are unable to do more, I'd say you're wrong. But I, I step back, Judge. I stand down, unlike many who do this. And your question presupposes this. This is not a red or blue problem. Republicans do a good job of talking about stopping crime rather than actually stopping it. If you're in power, there should be the same kind of coalition that Greg 
uh, offered this question to Franny often. When can we come together? Why can't mayors and DAs, why don't we hire more cops and prosecutors? Why don't we build more jails? I've been as outspoken, and I know a lot of Democrats. In fact, in fact my best friends are Democrat. None of them are defunding the policers. All of them want more jails, more prosecutors, more cops. They want to the end the cashless bail. There has to be a way to come together to deal with this. And I understand we, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's some advantage and there's some, you know, there's a, there's a the political partisanship advantage in, in blaming one party or the other. But the facts belie the point. Republican-led states have high crime rates and high murder rates just like Democrats do. You can nod your head all you want, and I, I, I don't mind you nodding it, but the facts refute your point. We should come together and try to solve the problem. Period. Because I don't want to, when I go to college, my kids go to college, I don't want to go that weekend and have to worry about being shot or, for that matter, any parent okay, being so shot or killed. Why did Governor Hochul not come out and address it? It happened in her state. She's running for office. They are devoted to the ideology of power, irrespective of the consequences. In every one of those cases, a mayor, a congressman, a, a governor could react. But they are, they, are, they are so power hungry. Behind the scenes, I'll say I hate it. None of us want to be the victim of a crime. But, no but until we make them accountable, until we put people in office who are going to say, no more cashless bail, no more bail if someone is going to be a no. danger to the community. That's the only time we're going to be safe. I agree, but the governors of Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, Kentucky, and South Carolina are Republican. I don't say this is a Republican crime problem. I'd say it's a national problem. Not, and Greg, you had no, the question the right way. Not That's every state, state constitutionally can fire a DA. In Pennsylvania, the governor today could fire the DA, Larry Krasner, in Philadelphia. Not every state has that authority. Right. This is a national problem. That's all I said. But New York can It's okay. a national problem. You know what else is a national problem? <laughs> <laughs> Getting to the break. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.